We have uh, David calling us from Arizona, pronouns he, him, uh, wants to tell us, uh, wants to convince us to, to adopt his uh, theology. Awesome. So I'm happy to hear that. David, hello. Welcome, David. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Thank you. So you want to tell us, uh, you want to convince us to adopt your theology. Is that right? That's right. It should be pretty easy because if you don't accept the premises, then we can just end the call. <laughs> cool. Okay. I'm, I'm very excited. So uh, I'm wondering, do you want to start by telling us what your theology is, or do you just want to present the premises of the argument? Um, well, I think I'd rather just go straight to the premises and then see if you can poke any holes in it or offer any uh, useful critique of my logical framework that I use to process the God topic. Well, I'm ready to take notes then. Start the clock. Let's give David some time to convince us of his theology. Fantastic. All right. Don't worry. This won't take too long. All right. So both of you just consider this premise one. It's, I didn't take much time to write this out. It's short. Premise one, for something to be appropriately called God in the monotheistic sense, it must merit utter devotion slash be worship worthy. That's okay, I reject your first premise. <laughs> on, keep, on going. The grounds. keep going. Keep going. Well, I, 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 it, I don't want to continue to the other premises if I, if I don't understand why you reject the premise. Well, but I think it's pretty it's pretty uh, obvious that if you want to present a certain argument, then you should um, present the premises and the conclusion first, instead of uh, just it, arguing about the first it, one. You're not. I, I I already know if you don't accept the first premise, that you, that you won't be convinced by the argument. Correct. Uh, you, would you like to know? So what I have here is you said for something to be appropriately called God in the monotheistic sense, it must merit utter devotion and what? Worship, be worship worthy. Okay, worthy, I, I, worship I disagree worthy. with that too. That's that's completely false. I think. But Matt, go ahead. <laughs> sure. Uh, so, first of all, this is an assertion. Uh, I don't know who you are to decide what is or isn't appropriate. Uh, but a god, in the I sense of the class, I'm I'm still talking. But a god, in the sense of classical theism, doesn't have to be good. Uh, it is more about its power and its relationship to the natural world. And so you could have an evil God, um, which is not worthy of worship and not worthy of devotion. Okay. And it would still qualify for a God label appropriately, would it not? Well, um, I, I feel like I'm qualified to say, okay, but what I'm wondering is, is the I asked a question right there. I, I asked I a question. You, I feel like I'm qualified to say. I asked a question, would it, why would it not be appropriate for an evil God with the same powers and abilities of whatever God you're proposing, why would it not be appropriate to call that being a God? Oh, because it, it wouldn't be worship worthy. That, uh, okay, well then I don't give a shit about your definition. Well, you, you seem very angry. Okay, I, I guess I'm done with you, David, because I explained to you that I don't accept your premise. I don't care that you're definite. You are basically creating a circular argument of you're saying I'm defining God to be that which is worship worthy. Well, I don't care what the, about that I definition. I, I, I care about yes. I care about whether or not a God actually exists, not about whether or not David thinks that something should be worship worthy to be called a God. Well, you you sound quite sassy. I'm very sassy, but <laughs> do you have something else other than just? Other than just complaining about my tone, do you have something of substance to argue for? Well, or are you wasting our time? I, I was looking for a useful objection to the premise. Okay, David, can, can I make an objection too, just to share my part? I think uh, I would like to share my opinion as well, if that's okay with you. Uh, so he, here's the thing it's not even historically uh, true that um, a monotheistic God uh, can only be called God if, uh, if if that God is worthy of uh, devotion and worship that was not uh, unanimously the understanding of one God in history uh, 
certain certain groups certain movements certain uh thoughts of theology have uh, did not um i'm sorry i have to mute you i'm getting feedback here uh, have not emphasized worship uh, others have focused more on simply knowing and understanding god rather than worshiping god others have argued that uh, there is one god that only one god exists but this god doesn't require worship doesn't want worship i mean we are familiar with uh such religious movements in history um and again as matt also pointed out uh who are you to decide what is worthy of worship and worthy of devotion that is entirely subjective so the premise simply uh, is incoherent yeah and why are we limiting it to monotheistic god as if what if there were polytheistic well, gods or henotheistic what, gods? what i'm look, what i'm looking at is something of, of all the things that are okay is one of them do the most reverence, okay? And when I'm thinking of God, I regard as do the most reverence. I only have my subjective view. I don't care. Okay? I, I, I don't claim to. You're, you're not talking I, about a not, God that is in you, any way. You not caring, you not caring is not useful information to me. Okay, then goodbye. Piss off. But I'm explaining why that's the case. Would you like to learn something? Uh, I have to mute you again. Please, uh, you need to stop screaming, David. Uh, but the, the point that Matt is making is that you are uh, simply coming with um, a, an argument that is you know, that this is simply baseless. It is a subjective uh, opinion that something is worthy of worship. You can't possibly yeah. accept people to accept that. When I say I don't care, what I mean, David, is that you anybody could call in with their esoteric definition of a god and say, here's what I mean by god you're not advocating for something that actually exists you're engaged in some mental masturbation and i care about gods in the sense that there are billions of people on the planet who actively believe that there is a being and they would agree most of them a better chunk of them that it's a monotheistic god that's worthy of utter devotion and worship and and, and worship of uh worthy of worship so they would they would agree with your definition of god and yet what you're doing is limiting the definition of God to something that is just an intellectual exercise that is absolutely useless. So if you'd like to present the rest of your premises in order to support your, your theology, I'm happy to hear them. But I told you that I rejected the first premise. Your first premise being basically in order for something to qualify as a God, David thinks it must be monotheistic, worthy of utter devotion and worship worthy. And I don't care what David's definition of God is for the purposes of anything other than does it actually exist? Uh, so, David, I'm going to unmute you. Um, if you want to add anything to that, if you want to present the rest of your uh, premises, please uh, go ahead now. Uh, I just would like to maybe uh, ask one question and then just close it out. To see, I, I, I think of it like this. I, I try to use the terms. You know, I speak English, and for me, a rule for the terms I use, especially noun terms, okay, there, there's got to be something that that term refers to in, in order for that term to be an intelligible term, okay? And I have something. Are you there? Yes. Yes. Oh, I got We're you. just bored with this English lesson. Oh, oh well, I, I, I'd rather talk to people who have better attitudes anyway. I'll talk to Good. you. Good. Goodbye I, then. Later. Goodbye. Thank, thank you, David. Uh, yeah. I'd like so to I, talk to people with better attitudes too. People who have <laughs> actually put some time and thought into presenting a syllogism and are willing to accept that if I reject a premise and give you the reasons that I reject it, that coming back with you don't like my attitude or you want to find somebody who's nicer to talk to uh, is just admitting that you lost. So go away. Yeah. I, I, and I, I want to point out, I mean, there is... Um, it's actually a very nice, very, very funny point to bring up uh, the English language and the definition of God, for example. God is not something that uh, is that that has a unanimous definition that is uh, verifiable, you know, that we can compare to 
uh, something that everyone knows to be God. There is no one definition of God. Everyone has different definitions of God. Uh, you can define it as you want. If you want to define it as uh, a being that is worthy of worship or worthy of devotion, that is your definition of God. That is not the English definition of God. That's not the universal definition of God. So that's that's also, again, a completely wrong, terrible approach, in my opinion. Yeah. But that's just me. And, and moreover, before we get to the call, I've got a couple more announcements. But moreover, uh, with regard to the, that last call, um, I speak English, and in English, I think that nouns ought to point something. Yes, David, you smug little jackass. I'm sorry you're mad. But yes, it's very good to define your terms. And so if you wanted to begin before the argument and say, I'm going to be arguing for God, and my definition of God is a monotheistic being that is worthy of devotion, and then premise one is this, that would have been fine. But when you're when you begin and say premise one is in order for something to qualify as a god, it must meet this particular esoteric definition. Of course, I'm going to object as anybody else would. If you submitted that to any scholarly journal, they would object as well. You can define your terms and then go on to the premise. Say, I'm going to be arguing for a god that is worthy of worship. Premise one. But if, if your premise one was the only thing worthy of calling a god is something worthy of worship, then you've already got a circular argument right at the very beginning. 